myself prasad bokil uh, i am from pune my mother tongue is marathi and i use devanagari <coughs> script to write uh, today i am going to present breaking the monotony of grids uh, how to make grids flexible using geometric guidelines is not at all new for architecture or even for image making the ar the use of grids in architecture goes back much up to 4th century bc and for graphic design even before that grids in modern design are is it's a well known tool which emerged from the constructivism and rational distribution of space grid is well explored in typography and publication design here is just the uh, <laughs> representation of a column grid and modular grid i would like to quote uh, joseph muller brockman which is quite influential in my research the designer's work should have the clearly intelligible objective functional and aesthetic quality of mathematical thinking his work should thus be a contribution to general culture and itself form part of it every visual creative work is a manifestation of the character of the designer it is a reflection of his knowledge his ability and his mentality as a controlling system the grid makes it easier to give the surface or space a rational organization coming to the topic of my research the title is understanding grids and exploring the intersystemic exchange of grids in graphic design now grids is used in design by expert designers and professionals for many years and it's very effectively used so what exactly i am doing or i am contributing into it using grid effectively is a technique is a skill is an art i am trying to understand what all goes while using grids in design process in the morning professor botnik has mentioned the importance of cognitive processes in design i am trying to study the use of grids from a design uh, from a cognitive perspective the definition which i created for the grid for my research is it is a structure that discretizes any continuum it's a mathematical definition which in uh, which which is applicable for any form of grid in any medium the, the current model of learning in graphic design is to observe practice and learn it is skill based and practice oriented but in terms of research it is there is insufficient articulation is a lack of knowledge externalization and incomplete knowledge representation so to start with the factors which are responsible or which defines the need of grid are qualitative and quantitative so there are quantitative factors like mass production large quantity of information variety of information less production time multiple production sites repetitive work and quantitative precision <coughs> and in terms of qualitative factors it's homogeneity visual identity information hierarchy visual ergonomics visual aesthetics cultural identity and philosophical identity so these are the factors when you start your design project if these things are involved in your design project you should think of using grid it is either helpful or sometimes it's very essential the basic advantages of grid are consolidated as it's used for space organization content management work distribution homogeneity and cohesiveness resource management usability enhancement aesthetic enhancement and create a cultural identity in spite of all these advantages there is a skepticism and doubt there is a fear of design becoming dull and lifeless unless the grids are used imaginatively yes imaginatively the feedback i frequently got is like 
Grids are grids can be used well or ineffectively. They are essential for ensuring visual consistency, accuracy, and timeliness. Used well, they make a project more professional and add visual interest. But used or chosen badly, well, then yes, you will end up with static, repetitive, and boring design. Yes, static, repetitive, and boring design. So when I conducted a survey designs uh, of designers, around 14% of designers were quite dogmatic about using grids in every design work. But at the same time, there, there were around 12% of designers who don't use grid at all. There are different notions and philosophies about grid. And use of grids depends on habit and nature of designer. But when it comes to disadvantages of grid, almost 41% designers express that if it is not used properly, there is a fear of getting caught in it. And there are other things like the it's becoming static or boxy and it's boring, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But what it is what it means by if not used properly or not used wisely, not used creatively, all these terms are very subjective. And it's very difficult to find an objective answer from any books. Now to define creative use, the approach borrowed here is from artificial intelligence based on design variables. If design variables and their values or range of values remain same during the design process, then it is a routine design. If only values change, change, keeping the variables fixed, then there is a innovation, an innovation. If both variables and their value change during the design process, then it is a creative design. Uh, just to give an analogy to understand this, uh, we all watch Hindi movies, Hindi masala movies, formula movies. For years and years, they are same. They are routine. Once in a while, a main lead role becomes a negative, becomes a villain. Not villain, just a negative. He changes his value to negative, and it's become interesting. And sometimes the item song, which is a newly added variable, it all of a sudden makes movie more creative. So it's very vague analogy, but still. Now the main question remains: what are the variables of grid? To understand the variables of grid, first step we took is we considered design, grid as design itself, uh, rather than considering it as a design tool. So while designing a layout, there is a two-level process which is happening. On the first level, designer involves in the designing of grid for which which is the purpose of which to help designer to create better and effective visual. And then designer, either the same designer or a different designer, uses that grid to create layout using that grid. Uh, after considering grid as a design, we can use all design models and design methodologies to explain grid. Now this is uh, one model which is called as function behavior structure model introduced by Jero in 1990. And last 20 years it's been quite useful to explain design process. Uh, I will not explain this in very detail, there is no time. But mainly it's the function is the purpose of design, the structure is the form. But to achieve the function from the structure or to imagine a structure for a particular function, it has to go through a behavior. So a structure is created which gives certain behavior to satisfy a particular function. After applying this model to our two level uh, grid and layout system, it's it's little difficult. Just be with me for two minutes. Uh, okay. So 
the the part which is represented in red is layout design and the part which is represented in blue is grid design so when a function of a layout means a brief is given the function of of a layout is conceived by designer from that function he imagine a particular behavior which is expected behavior that expected behavior of layout gives rise to actual function of a grid that function of grid gives expected behavior of grid and from expected behavior of grid actual grid is designed so the actual design of grid actually represent or responsible for the structure of the layout now this is the process which is happening in the in the head and it's a it's a repetitive process if designer is not happy with with a grid structure then he can again go into the loop and change the grid itself to get the new design now based on this structure behavior and function we can define different variables based on structure there are variables like points line shapes the page sh shown here is is just one page with a uh, margin now if we see it in a different way there are four points four lines and one shape which can hold a text now we can change that to eight points six lines and three shapes to have variation or 12 points 8 lines 6 6 shapes so basically flexibility of grid increases with the increase in number of structure variables uh here is a page from newspaper design uh sorry for the anyway so so there is uh, this circular arc which is introduced later on there is normal grid which is present column grid and this circular arc is introduced which which is another structural variable which gives more freedom or more flexibility to the grid and it cre it helps to create a uh, good layout so similarly there are behavior variables there are five types of behavior variables position proportion area orientation sequence uh, i know it's it's little jargonish to get in one go but just remember if if a new designer if any point he gets stuck or if he realizes that his design is becoming repetitive and boring he can think of changing any of this variable in his grid so for position so there are these three positions which are defined for title for text for page number and then pages and pages are designed like that proportion because of grid there is a set of proportions which are available area either 18 small pockets or one horizontal rectangular and square or this or this so any form of area it can take so basically position area and proportion are most commonly used behavior variables for variations in publication grids orientation in terms of orientation it has a little limitation because of the readability factor the text which is uh, most of the scripts are more legible when they are in horizontal direction some scripts are also used in vertical direction so because of that the orientation has a limitation of vertical and horizontal axis but it also uh, designers have used to change this uh, variable to acquire interesting results and a sequence 
sequence automatically comes when the grid is in position. The, the mismatch of sequence of grid and the sequence of content can create interesting results. From basic behavior variables, there can be set of exo exogenous behavior variables which can be derived. I'm not going into that. Just one example of perspective. When with a normal grid, which is the text which is in two dimensional, only images and few graphical elements, they are put up in, in perspective. So in terms of structuredness, we can see books are quite structured and so the, the, the cover pages, the, the first pages of uh, newspapers, but when, if we see the sports pages and the cultural pages, they have used these variables to, to tweak the grids and achieve interesting designs and magazine covers and posters. So there are four ways. The grid remains same, but the layout acquires various values from the set of variable values. The grid is changed by changing values of one or more variables. The part of layout or grid is set off from the routine values of variables or background elements are introduced in the concurrence or in contrast of grid. So I'm just going fast in remaining slides. It's, yeah, it's, it's done. So it's just showing the examples. The po position variable is changed. Position variable is changed. The area variable is changed. The area variable of complete grid is changed. The proportion variable is changed. The orientation variable is changed. The orientation of complete grid is changed. There are few examples. Now here, the, the same orientation variable, how it is changed, the complete grid is changed once, or only two blocks are changed, the orientation is changed, remaining kept same, or only the alignment of part of text is changed. So, yeah. So similarly, all these variables one by one can be explained in details. Very sorry, there is no time. I'm just go through the conclusion. So more the degree of discretization, more the number of variables, and more is the flexibility of grid. If the layout follows the fixed values of variables of grid, then it is monotonous design. If the layout is designed based on the range of values of each variable of grid, then it, it becomes interesting design. For creative layouts, designers need to introduce new variables or new values of variables during the layout design. And awareness of these variables may help designer to break the monotony of grid. Thank you. Thank you.